Hello, and welcome back to Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. I'm Dr. Abstract. Uh, without internet, so I still can't go and show you uh, around the site as much as I usually do. And we'll get that tomorrow. Yay! But in the meantime, I'm doing some tutorials here. How about we go take a look at what we last did? So that's back here, and it was to go from one page to another. Uh, I forgot got that we were going to do something with these tabs and sort of maybe make these smaller and move them up a bit, but uh, whatever, it doesn't matter too much. Actually, could be how you want it, who knows. Anyway, that's what we did last time. This time, let's move to something completely different. Uh, the last two tutorials have been on the Zim pages here. First, we just did a pages with swipe, and then we did a pages uh, that we showed how to use the tabs and the arrows. Okay, so I'm going to close that down, and we're done with this code now. Let's open up a new one, but what we'll do is we'll save this one, file save as, and we'll call this one, I think we're on 15 now, and we will take a look at, how about, um, hmm, well, a label, but I was specifically going to animate animate uh, text. So what do we want to call it? Mm, it's called label letters. Uh, why don't we call it letters? FLA. And we can get rid of this one or well, some of it. We'll keep this 15 though, we'll say. And we will say label or animating letters. Animating letters. <clears throat> okay, good. And we'll get rid of all that. Pop. And so that uh, a label, first of all, looks like this new label, and we can say some words, some words. How about hello animators? Is that what you call yourself? <laughs> this is tricky, huh? Because you might not be only animators, you're creators. How about creators? We'll call it creators. I would say that Adobe Animate is one of the most wonderful tools that you could possibly have if you're a creator. You could make so many things in it and it's just helped so many people be creative all the way back through the flash days, etc. I became a creator. The people who created CreateJS, they were creators and they worked in Flash for, for many years and they called their their framework or our library, I guess, uh, CreateJS. We called it Zim and our our motto is code creativity. So yay, hello creators then, there you go. And we would want to center that, dot center. And so that would be a default label, hello creators centered on the stage. Uh, if you have just joined us for some reason, <laughs> missed the other 15 tutorials or however many we're on, 14 tutorials, then you should probably check back to those other tutorials to see how we got all started here to make sure that Zim works like that. So this is Zim. And we have brought Zim in here in the profile settings with this thing called Zim Shim, available in the code section of the Zim site at zimjs.com. As a, a quick... All right, uh, so since we have already set that up in our earlier examples, and I just copied one of those earlier examples, that's why this is working here. So you can also specify the... I think it's the size that comes next. Uh, let's check it. 100 and control enter. It is indeed the size. Hello creators. Nice vector crisp um, text there. So and then then it's the font. So career, etc. The font. Uh, we can also load in Google fonts, for instance, or um, custom fonts. If you put them in the same directory, you can load in custom fonts. We do that with the load assets. Back in Zim, when we're not using Adobe Animate, we just pass them into the frame as, as we're creating the frame. But uh, here you would do the load assets uh, technique to bring in a font asset. Then we could use any custom font that you have as well. Um, after that is the color. So th that's a label. Great. And we use we have labels all over the place. They're in buttons, for instance. So when we make a button, we can just give it some text. But if we want special things about that text, then such as custom font, then we can either use style, zim style, or we can pass in a label object. Instead of just some words, we can pass in any label we want, and it will add that to the button. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me, but what we're here to look at is label letters. 
which is very similar. I can't remember if that is the size that goes there. Let's drop it and let's try 50 and, and see how it goes. Okay, so this is label letters. You can see that it's quite similar. Um, the spacing, I believe, though, might be a bit bigger than not, because now what, what Zim has done is it turns each of these letters of the label into its own label. So H is a label, E is a label, L is a label, etc. That allows us to animate this. Uh, by the way, you can do something like that in Flash as, or in a, Animate as well. If you have a label, you can break it apart into its letters, and then you can break that apart into its shapes as well. Uh, but anyway, there is a label then broken down into parts, and now we can do things like an animate it. So we can animate it, or we can loop through it and wiggle. But anyway, we'll try just an animation to start. Animate with an E, and... <clears throat> we're going to drop into the Zim Duo technique here because I want to show you a special one. If we just animate the whole thing, it's not going to be very special. So if, well, I mean, it might be what you want. How about, uh, what do we want to do? How about we animate the props of scale? Uh, or we could animate the Y position up a bit. But anyway, scale of 1.5. Uh, I don't know. This will be fine. Um, and we could do it in a time of whatever, one second, and we can rewind colon true and loop colon true. Okay, and let's see what we get. Oh, well, that's not very pleasant because it's animating from the top left corner. And so what we might want to do is center reg this and it'll look a bit better, but it's not quite what I want to do anyway. I was wanting to animate each letter a little bit bigger. So to do that, we would add in here a sequence, sequence. Anytime you say a sequence, then it will animate the uh, children of the container in that sequence. So of point one or something like that. And let's have a look now. Well, that doesn't look all that great. <laughs> Uh, less, much less time, point, uh, point 0.2 on the time. And there, that's a little bit more fun. Oh, <laughs> actually, maybe it's a little bit too quick. What do you say? Here's how it came in. All right, so it, it animates in as a sequence and then does a rewind. Actually, you may not want to keep on rewinding. How about we just don't do the loop? Or sorry, you may not want to loop. Uh, and we do probably want the sequence to be faster. It's not bad, but you, you really want... Um, this also works with... Right now, by default, the letters inside of label letters here are center-regged. You can tell that they are. It has nothing to do with the fact that we center-regged this. It's just by default, we know that you're going to want to animate things in there, and often we want to animate them from the center. Okay, there we go. All right. But uh, why don't we try, see, see what else we could do, a Y. And we can animate to a certain Y, like um, say we animated to 100, you might think that that's kind of silly. Uh, actually, that, that was interesting. It wasn't what I expected to do. So since the label letters are in the container themselves, it turns out that this is 100 down inside the container. They must be roughly at zeros, and then we're animating 100 down in the container. I thought each of these were going to animate to position 100 on the stage, but I forgot that they're all in their own container. Therefore, it's 100 in the container. Remember, if we do something like outline this, uh, dot outline, just to show us where that is, that's what it looks like right there. And so it's animating down to position 100. So if we then um, say, okay, great, why don't we just go to minus 20 or something like that? And let's have a look here. We don't need to outline anymore. And we could have even done a minus 10. Yeah, probably a minus 10 would be fine. And let's speed that up just a little bit. We can put elastics on there. Oh, I'm sure that would look nice. Uh, time of 0.1, sequence of 0.05 seconds, and let's make it minus 10. 
well, I don't know, whatever. It's a little bit stiff or something, <laughs> wouldn't you say? A little bit stiff looking. But you get the idea. So these are the types of animations you can do with label letters. You can also start to operate on... Um, you, uh, label letters has HTML kind of built into it, HTML text stuff. So you can change font colors or like the color of certain letters you by putting in tags. So I don't know. I haven't tried this in a long time. It goes, it harkens back to, what if we put in a bold there? I think we can put in emphasis or not a, uh, I think we can put in a strong as well. But we went back to the very uh, beginning with the HTML and let's just see if the letter uh, C is bold. It is indeed bold. Okay, so that means you can start now to apply colors to it. And I think the color is just done with, uh, I can't remember how we did that color. <laughs> um, uh, probably not. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. We, yeah, let me look that up. So I would go to the docs normally on the Zim site, but my internet is down. So we go zim.labelet and that'll find label letters where it describes the stuff that you can do. So, oh yeah, okay. So a font, there's a font tag. Oh, I'm so sorry. You know, we, we considered it. You, you can use the M and the strong for the bold. So that's fine. We brought it back up to sort of modern times. Um, HTML5 times. But we got a font with a color and a background color, a role background color, a size, a family and a group to apply a style to it, almost like a class or whatever. So there's no quotes. So, you know, come on, give us a break. We, we had to rebuild HTML. It wasn't terribly fun to do. <laughs> Actually, it kind of was. But um, uh, there you go, to get, to get it so that we can somewhat style these letters. So, uh, you know, it's a font color. Okay, let's try it. Uh, font and you can color colon or equals red like that and then end of font you could have made it bold too to handle nestings oh boy all right and i mean you should be happy because uh in the, in the create js world we just had a label you, you'd have to change the color of the whole label you can make certain parts of this certain words interactive by putting in an A thing. So we've sort of rebuilt some of the basics of HTML right in the label. Um, so there you go. Okay, great. Uh, that's some animation. I wonder if we can animate to a color. Yeah, we can. Uh, this is gonna rewind, so why don't we go to purple? Oh, we have to put color first. I haven't tried this. Ooh, that's cool. Do you see what's happening there? Kind of want it to go a bit slower. Maybe let's not do the Y for now. Uh, what I was going to say back there is this works well because we're basically at zero right now. And so when we um, go to minus 10, that looks super. But if you wanted relative position, you you can put in quotes. So you can put the thing that you're wanting to, the value in quotes. And when it's in quotes, it means minus 10 from its current location. Okay, because this is sitting at zero in the container, it's, it's okay. Or it might not be quite zero. I don't know what it's at in the container, but um, anyway, I'll get rid of that. And just have a look and see what this purple does. And we'll open this time up a little bit more. And I want to I want to see a purple letter go through that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> would a would a different color be better? Different font would be better. I have impact on mine. I don't know. Maybe this is the font. You guys might not have impact. So annoying. Actually, no, that's not impact. It's not the font. Mm. <laughs> it's not the font either. All right, let's have a look. <clears throat> well, I could have done it this way. But under the label letters, label letters, label. It looks like 
looks like font is not even on there. So it's expecting that you're going to style it or when you pass in the label, uh, that's it. So you can pass in a label and when you do pass in the label, so label letters, you can set any label properties such as color font and label passed in. So what does that mean? You can set any label properties such as color font. It can pass in a string with the basic old fashioned HTML. Any label properties such as color, size, font, etc. So where, how do we do that? Align, it's not got those things. Um, probably just a label is what we're talking about there. So I don't know, because then the new label would have these things in it. Be odd, let's just set it with style. Style equals font colon impact impact like that just to get a little bit fatter and control enter and get rid of this stuff which wasn't doing anything mm, there we go okay so look. nice ish <laughs> i mean whatever i, I didn't know Maybe perhaps a little bit bigger and uh, uh 90 80 Wait a second, is that not even the size? <laughs> That's not the size, <laughs> nothing changed. What's going on down here? It's some sort of grid going on. I must've hit a hotkey to get that grid in Flash itself. Cool. Uh, size, yeah, where did the size go? So it, it's not on there either, label letters. There's a lot of parameters for the label. And I think what we were intending is just pass in a label when, when, we, when we do that. Yeah, because we got nothing really from the label. It's all relative to the aligning and spacing of label letters. So that's probably supposed to be any any label we can pass in there too. A string or a Zim label. There we go. Okay, so we can pass in a Zim label. Or uh, we could do it here. Size colon 80. And so I don't know what I was, something wrong was being passed in there. But anyway, there's there it is with the size of 80. Uh, we could rotate the letters and change their color. Rotation colon 180, comma. Oh my word. <laughs> All right, great. What does the ease on that do? I don't know if I want to try it. Ease colon uh, elastic, which would be better elastic in or out. Uh, if we're rewinding true elastic out, I guess, and we'll see. So there's elastic out. We'll increase the time a little bit so we can see some more elastic to one. <laughs> okay. I don't know about that. What's with it going down? This is like hanging down there and doing, doing the elastic. It's like got this elastic delay on it. We can specify the ease um, of it. It looks like it's dropping down too much huh? rather than going about the middle. As it rotates, yeah. So are these, are these things uh, aligned in the align uh, center? That makes it worse. Why would that have made each letter worse? V align center. That should be right. Uh, what if we do the top? Oh, that's exciting. So there's definitely, I wonder if it's the impact may be um, in the wrong place. That's probably what it is. So that would be more like a shift vertical. Pull and uh, bring it up, I think we had to do. No, try it down. Yeah, there we go. Okay, what, what happens is certain fonts have different baselines. It's really hard to kind of 
handle that. Basically, we can't. Um, and so we have it set so that our default font, which is roughly an Arial or whatever, some Verdana, is fine. But Impact is in a different place, and we've got a fairly large size font, and so that's that's um, moving a little bit. So we've created a shift vertical, which will move the font within its uh, base, in a sense, um, to handle that. And that is how we have made it whoa, turn purple and turn upside down and then come back around. Wow. Hello, creators, for sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if we want that. What about spacing? Do we, do we check out spacing? You guys are going, oh, come on. I want to get to my cookie. I know. You can have your cookie in a sec. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to get to my cookie, too. Letter spacing. Letter spacings. So letter spacing, you can just set it once, and all of the spacings will be that. Letter spacings is an array. Okay? So letter spacings is an array where you can specify individually the spaces and do something like kerning, I guess. There's also line spacing and line spacings and line height and lines and a few other things there. Caching. If we're animating uh, text, this is all vectors. You'll get smoother animation probably if it weren't vectors, if it's uh, bitmaps. So if you cache it, if you're going to animate this all the time, that's great. Uh, it won't look quite as crisp, but you won't be able to tell as it's animating. However, if you're going to leave it, like you see how we're leaving it here now, and there's no performance issues really there. That we're leaving it there, we probably don't want to cache it. But if you're animating text constantly, then you might want to consider caching it because people won't be able to tell it's cached. They'll just see smoother animation. All right, so we wanted to try back here in Adobe Animate. I think it was, was it the next parameter? I forgot to look. Label, align, V align, letter spacing. So we've got the aligns. And then letter spacing. So maybe we want that to be a little bit wider so that as they spin, they don't hit one another in there. Okay, let's try it. What is the default letter spacing? So to find a default, you, you come on down. Default letter spacing is five. Okay. Between the letters, if you go zero, it will be exactly like the label was initially. But with label letters, we open up the spacing a little bit. Otherwise, they all... Um, anyway, let's open it up a bit more. We could do it up here in a style, or we can go to it after the two aligns, which was null, null, and what was it? Mm, let's go to 20. And now our letter spacing is a little bit more. Huh, not bad. Interesting, uh, as it holds and rewinds, you don't have to do an elastic. It, it, the problem is it's it's heading towards upside down and it does an elastic and then it does an elastic as it comes back. So that's how it works. We sort of flip the, uh, the ease. So you can control that though by saying rewind ease. So, oops, I sat on the line and copied it. Rewind. Ease colon quad in out. So that's the default ease. I wonder if we can just say null there. Anyway, that's the default ease. So we're going to elastic only on the way out and then come back normally. And let's see if that looks any different. It certainly looks different. Hello? <laughs> So that's, that's not an elastic coming back, but unfortunately that's a 0.5 seconds um, rotation, which seems a little bit slow to me. Huh? So maybe we want to make the rewind time. Often we don't have to individually do this. Uh, rewind time of like 0.2 seconds or something like that. And let's have a look. Yeah, that's, that's better. Boing, boing, boing. And then it doesn't boing, boing, boing. So it doesn't hold on to the end as long. It just uh, it's a little bit tidier. 
anyway, it's, it's not, not sure if you want to do that, but uh, there's just some explorations in Zim. This many explorations. <laughs> I think I uh, closed a bunch of them too, so it's been even more. Why don't we call that a day then? I am uh, Dr. Abstract for Zim Tutorials for Adobe Animate. Hopefully you had some fun with label letters to see how you can affect your letters. You can probably apply those types of easing. Oh, I forgot to show you. I was going to wiggle. Oh my god. I was going to wiggle. Uh, how are we doing for time? It's 25 minutes. Well, it'll take five minutes to wiggle and I may as well show you. Coming back. Hello. Welcome back. Hey. All right. So that was the animate version. And if we comment this out, comment. There's also the wiggle version, dot wiggle. Hmm, I think we have to wiggle each individual letters. So animate has sequence, but wiggle does not have a sequence where it will uh, do something in a sequence. So basically we need to loop through the letters. To be able to do that, we store it in a, in a variable. So the old const variable, uh, letters with an R is equal to that. And then down below, we loop through our letters. So here's Zim, oh, almost here's Zim loop. Uh, with Zim loop, because Adobe Animate, we showed this in another tutorial, Adobe Animate has a loop variable or something like that, a global loop variable. I'm not even sure what it's used for, but we didn't want to overwrite that with the Zim loop. It's the only conflict that we found so far. Um, so we didn't, which means if you want to use a Zim loop, you either go Zim loop like that, and you can start using a Zim loop in Animate, or you can say loop is equal to Zim loop, Zim loop. That's the Zim namespace. All of the Zim functions and stuff like that can be found on the Zim namespace as well. And you can force a namespace if you want so that you always have to use it. But, and then we would have to say things like zim dot label letters, which would work, but we don't have to do that. However, you can force it to do that. But uh, I don't think there's really any point in doing that. However, if we want to go back to just saying loop, like we usually do when we're using zim, we want to, oh, right, I forgot. This is a little bit different in that letters is a container. So there is actually no problem. But if you wanted to loop 10 times, this would be a zim looping 10 times, I arrow function. Okay, that would be loop 10 times. Each time you get i. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. If you want to loop through an array, so say this were an array of uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, or something like that, this is how you could do it. Each time you would get the element, element or whatever, uh, followed by the index if you want, followed by the total if you want, and all those are in parameters for you if, if you so need. So that would loop through this array each time you would be given the element. Usually we don't need the I at that at that point. We would just, you, know, you can still collect I and it'll be one, two, three, four. All right, so that's the Zim loop. If you needed to use the Zim loop, you can also loop through an object literal and a couple other things, but um, then you'd have to do something like that. However, we're using the loop method. So that looks like this, letters dot loop. And <laughs> letters dot loop. Letters.loop. And each time we're going to get a letter. And we call the arrow function. Okay, so this loops through the letters that are in here. I hope it does. It's got a container. There's um, possibility. I think that works. Let us set the letter dot L alpha. Or, well, we could do either the property alpha equals 0.5 like that. That's fine there. Or we could say dot alp and 0.5. Neither one is fine. And see if that works for us. It does. So you see how we've now looped through each of the letters and changed their alpha transparency down to 0.5. That's not what we want to do. What we want to do is wiggle each letter. So that looks like this. Wiggle. And a nice thing about wiggle is we're going to wiggle, let's wiggle the Rotation, rotation. So this is as a string though. Oh darn. There we go. And then we say about what value? About zero, the minimum. How about two, the maximum? How about, well, 
I'll let you see it, 10. It's going to be too much rotation. The minimum time, which will be something like 0.5 and 1. So this looks like the property that we want to rotate, prop, let's put prop, the start value, the minimum of that value, the maximum of that value, uh, the min time, and the max time. Okay, there's a few other parameters too after that, but that will get us a wiggle on each letter. Ooh, it looks like we're a little slow going, aren't we? Yeah, oh boy, look at that wiggling. <laughs> Are you falling asleep yet? Hello, creators. <laughs> Gosh, this is a good tutorial. Uh, I'm so happy you stayed for the 25 versions of this <laughs> that we saw. Uh, yeah. There we go, a little summary. Uh -huh. And finally, this is the, the wiggling one. Yeah, so we're back again. Okay, so why don't we increase the speed on that? That would be a good idea. Two to um, point, I don't know, point five. Oh, it's a little bit happier. Hello there, creators. Ah, yep. Hello, creators. And you, you could combine that too with the animations, probably. I suspect that that'll work all right. And why don't we go 5 to 10 and say 0.1 to 0.2 and get a really fast wiggling going on. Hello, creators. All right. And so isn't that neat? And what that allows you to do is wiggling will wiggle about a point or about a value. Animate won't do that. So you you, you could only animate to the uh, clockwise or you could animate counterclockwise or you could randomly animate either counterclockwise or clockwise, but it would always rewind to zero sort of thing. You know, whereas wiggle, wiggle we actually build it out of a couple animates in the background. We animate to half the size and then we start rewinding and animating from there. So it, it's just a little bit trickier to wiggle about a place and wiggle is great. It's very handy as you can see. There we are wiggling each letter. Now do you see why we wanted to wiggle? <laughs> Hello creators with the Red Sea, the Red Sea group. All right, there we go. I think, uh, I think we're good. I'll just show you that code one more time. We looped through each letter and then we wiggled the letter. Wow. So if we didn't have any of this animation stuff, don't worry, I'll bring it back. There we go. We made some label letters. We had to deal with a few things because we're impact, but we don't really don't need any of that. And it would have been fine. We put in a red C, but we don't have to. All right, it's basically, hey, make some, some words there uh, in label letters, loop through each of those and uh, wiggle each letter. All right, in our animate side, we didn't even have to do the looping because we have a sequence in animate and, and then we could do animate. So there you go. Happy, happy. It's been a delight to be here with you. Hopefully you did manage to sneak out and get a cookie. And I am Dr. Abstract, this little guy here. Oh, I'm not a little guy. <laughs> just stop saying that. Here we go. All my other screens, there's just this little uh, illustrated character of Dr. Abstract. I call him this little guy. But that's me. That's re really me. And look, I'm not little. That's like, well, yeah. <laughs> whatever. There's a big Dr. Abstract. Yes, grown up Dr. Abstract. All right. Uh, if you want, you're welcome to come and talk to us at zimjs.com slash slack and zimjs.com slash discord. Talk to us both places. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, either one, whatever. Uh, Slack is our official channel. If you're younger, you might want to use Discord. And we're just growing that. Uh, so please don't be shy. I think I think you are being shy. You know, people watching these tutorials, but uh, I'd love to hear from you in the channels. So why don't you come talk to us? All right, show us what you're making. Ask us questions. Oh my gosh. More questions. That's what we want. Yay. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.